Well, hello, true Mexico friends. This is Paul, an English guy, showing you Mexico through my eyes. And today, I'm on the Yucatan Peninsula in the colorful, vibrant, and safe city of Merida. Yes, this city was reported to be safer than all the cities in the United States. More about that in a moment. So stay tuned, lots of culture, food, and more coming up. Now, if you don't know Mexico that well, what I'm about to tell you might blow your mind because Merida, according to a business magazine report, is the second safest city in all of North America. And this city is safer than all major US cities because only Quebec in Canada is safer. Now, there are different reports, but statistics do show Merida as being Mexico's safest major city. Locals will tell you that Merida's nickname, the White City, perhaps originates in its overall safety and cleanliness. Some say it's because many of the buildings are built with what was once was white limestone. And it's a large city. Over one million people live here who are very proud of its safe reputation. So how have I felt walking around? Well, I left my hotel yesterday morning and saw this. And you don't usually associate Mexican police with cuteness, far from it. But this little vehicle is just so cute, isn't it? You'd expect to see it in somewhere like Japan. But I carried on walking and soon discovered it's not all like this. Although Merida is very safe, you still see the police with the huge guns in public places. That's just Mexican style, isn't it? And the city, with its reputation for being a very safe city, is becoming a hot destination for foreigners who like a very hot climate to come and live. It's also known as one of the cheapest major cities in Mexico. Merida is also relatively close to beaches and the Yucatan countryside with natural wonders like cenotes, which I absolutely love, are all nearby. And in recent years, the Yucatan economy has been growing faster than the rest of the country. It's currently one of Mexico's top investment spots. But perhaps the most impressive thing about Merida is its deep and diverse culture, which is what I'm going to talk about next. Now, culturally, Merida is so rich. So much so that Lonely Planet named the city as the American capital of culture in 2017. And I found a few things to be particularly fascinating. Firstly, the colonial era architecture is stunning. Beautiful buildings with vibrant colors are everywhere. Some have been renovated, others have more of a colonial era rustic charm to them, shall we say. And then I walked on to the famous Paseo de Montejo. Check out these old colonial era mansions. They are massive and just look how ornate they are. And it's interesting because many just sit there derelict and others have been converted into things like museums and different businesses. But back in the day, these were clearly fantasy houses. And I soon discovered that for a brief period, Merida was said to have housed more millionaires than any other city in the world. And that's quite a big deal, isn't it? So what happened here? Well, this particular type of agave plant grown all around the Yucatan Peninsula was turned into natural fiber for making things like rope. It was nicknamed green gold and many families with Spanish origins got stinking rich. Now, synthetic materials ended the boom years. And of course, not everyone got rich. The local Mayan people certainly didn't. And it's also been fascinating being in a city that has the highest percentage of indigenous people in any large city in Mexico. And of course, the Mayan influence is prominent. The clothing and textiles, the arts, dancing, the food, of course. Chocolate is also a big deal here because as many of you know, 
chocolate was a contribution from the Mayas to the rest of the world. And in Merida, the modern day Yucateco culture, a combination of the Mayan, colonial and modern day Mexican cultures, is quite unique for a large city in Mexico because the pre-Hispanic culture, Mayan in Merida's case, is stronger. Anyway, my tummy's rumbling, so now it's time to enjoy some of that food culture. And before I eat, a quick drink break. This drink is based on the miracle Mayan spinach and superfood called chaya. And one woman said to me in the market, do you want to buy some chaya papi? And papi, Paul, almost blushed. So, food time. Well, I already ate actually. It seemed like it was going to get really busy and I wanted to make sure I secured a table. But of course, I'm going to show you the amazing Yucatan specialities that I devoured. And I'm at a local market in the Santiago neighborhood of Merida. And I especially came here because located inside this market is Taqueria La Lupita. And I was reliably informed by the locals that this place is especially legendary for one of Yucatan's most well-known dishes, cochinita pibil. And oh boy, it was so good. And of course, you can see the pickled red onions on there, very important for this dish. And that's a bit of melt in your mouth, pork belly fat there too. That's not usual, but it's an option here if you fancy it. Anyway, I added some lime, poured on some salsa in Mexico style autopilot mode. And yeah, this by far was the best cochinita pibil I've ever had. Now, I can't show you all the local dishes, but I am now going to show you two more at once. This, the dark dish on top is called relleno negro. It's a dish with turkey, chicken can also be used, and boiled egg in this rich sauce, black in color because of all the different native to Yucatan condiments such as dried chilies. And all together, this is called a salbute, not a taco because the corn tortillas are a bit thicker than normal and has been fried in a way so that it's puffy and airy. Salbutes originate in Yucatan and I absolutely love them. And let's finish with the money shot. There you go. Thank you, Merida, for feeding me so well. Now next, a few more things that I found to be interesting in Merida. The main square is absolutely buzzing. Not only tourists, but the locals also come here to chill out with the family, go on a date and all that good stuff. The cathedral overlooking the main square is stunning and is one of the oldest cathedrals in the Americas. Also overlooking the main square is the House of Montejo. It was built by the orders of Don Francisco de Montejo, who was the conqueror of the Yucatan Peninsula. And we heard this Spanish conquistador's name just before, didn't we? And when I arrived and started walking around, something clicked in my brain. Montejo beer. Now, I've drank a few Montejos over the years, and it's pretty cool that it's originally from Merida. And in my beer research, I also realized that a beer I've been a fan of over the years, Leon, was originally brewed in Merida. Now, I'm outside a cantina because cantinas are also a big part of the culture here. And perhaps what best distinguishes most cantinas from a bar is that with every drink you buy comes free food. And I've been told the cantina behind me is a great one. And for just 25 pesos, plus a generous tip of course, Look at what I just devoured. I drank my Leon beer, ice cold and so refreshing on this hot day. And this was my free food. A serving of spaghetti, very tasty, and also some totopos with refried beans and also a peanut based dip. Very, very good. And check this out, beetroot cubes. 
I didn't expect that, but I tell you what, they went down very, very well. And stacking my empty plates just felt so satisfying. And before I finish today's video, I wanted to show you this, Marquesitas. It's a classic Yucatan street snack, and it's basically a crispy crepe, usually with a sweet filling. I got Nutella, and get this, grated Edam cheese, known as queso de bola, is also added. And the cheese addition might seem odd, but it's been part of the food culture here since the Europeans brought it to Yucatan in the 1800s. So let's do a taste test. Wow, Edam cheese and Nutella shouldn't work, but it does. I drank my Leon, now I've got a cheeky Montejo to drink back at the hotel. And if you enjoyed this taste of Merida, like it, share it, it helps me a lot. Also, if anyone can translate this video into Spanish, the link is below. Many of you help with this, it's greatly appreciated. And a massive thank you to my Patreons on Patreon and those of you who donate on PayPal. And if you haven't seen my videos before, why not click on one of them on the screen there, watch some more and subscribe. Anyway, I'm Paul. This is True Mexico. Hasta luego.